His name is Hazem Ibrahim. I have known Hazem for at least a good four or five years. He's a professional. He's a project manager for a reputed investment company. And he's a Toastmaster. And he's an amazing personality. Let us put our hands together and invite Mr. Hazem Ibrahim. Thank you, Ray, for the introduction. And good evening, everyone. I have only 14 minutes, so uh, what I'll do is I will share first uh, a small presentation. After that, we are going to go through uh, hands-on training. So first, we shall go with the presentation. I'm sharing my screen. OK. So magic with Excel. First of all, this is me. I have more than 22 years of experience in project management, business analysis, and software development. I'm certified trainer, certified business analyst, as well as certified project manager. Our constitution for the next 40 minutes is that we shall apply the 70-30 rule or 80-20 rule, name it as you, are, name it as you wish. It means that I'm going to spend 80% 80, 80 of the time explaining the rules or the Excel or whatever formulas that we are going to work on, and then you are going to spend 30% of applying the same. Safety rules, as Ray said, you know your exits, you are at your home, so don't ask me where are your restrooms. And meeting etiquettes, again, as Ray said, please keep your uh, mic muted, because with mic unmuted or video, on, you will disturb others. We will use the chat extensively, so if you need to keep uh, any questions, please uh, keep it in the chat room and raise your hand, and we will have a question and answer. Uh, this is our agenda. We will have introduction, simple tricks. Then, shall you, do you know how to sum and count in Excel? Check again, and we will do a simple forecasting. And before that, after that, we will see how to find cells in, in Excel, how to use certain uh, formulas and functions to find cells, and then what if an error happened. So I will begin with the first one, which is very simple tricks. Now I have shared with you uh, an Excel file on the Google Drive, so I, I ask every one of you to download it. If you didn't download it, please take the first next one minute to download the Excel in your laptop because we will use it. Okay, please raise your hand and show me your hand raised if you have downloaded the Excel file. If you used uh, Zoom before, you know that at the uh, participants, you can see raise hand. So can you do raise your hands or do thumbs up if you downloaded the Excel file? Very good, Zita have done that. Who else? Okay, I'll assume that everyone else have downloaded the Excel file because you need to participate, so you need to practice what I'm going to say. So, first part, Excel have a very good utility. Actually, Excel is a very good tool. If you, if you know how to use it very well, it will save you a lot of time, it will save you a lot of efforts, and it will help you to do lots of things. So, in the, sheet in, front you, in the sheet in front of you, you will find the first column called salesperson email. 
So if if you want to if you want to extract the name names, how can we do that? Do we need to retype it if you have? You can do it in in any other way. Same thing. We have the autofill. So autofill, for example, if I want to have a serial number for each and every one of them. So I will just put one and put, sorry, we have to make it number. So I will just put one and put two and then I will drag it. So you will find that automatically Excel detects the pattern and detects how to increment it. I can again use this one and make it copy cell. So it will just create the same pattern again or make it fill series. So it will make it like this. We can use it also for dates. So if I just come here and make it a date format, And both symbol date here, for example, June, May 1, 2020, and drag it again. For dates, you will find many ways. For example, you can say fill years, so it will automatically increment the years. Or you can say fill month, so it will change only the month. So June, May, May, June, July, August, September, October, and whatsoever. So in this case, I can do lots of things only with the autofill. So uh, I'll give you one minute to try the autofill in your Excel sheets. So please utilize the next one minute for trying the autofill and fill and flash fill in your Excel sheets. After that, we are going to go for 3D referencing. This is moment. Can you hear me? Sorry? Mu'min. Yeah. Yes, Mu'min. Uh, uh, there is another formula. If you want to add uh, or to combine two names, can I share it with you? Can I share it with all of you? Or this is we can do it for later? Yeah, you can share it on the chat if you wish. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mu'min. Okay, okay, okay. I'll call it. I'll show you what I'm So our next item in the introduction, which is 3D referencing. But before we go to 3D referencing, we have here, I'm, I'm assuming that we have salespersons and we have the sales for the whole year. And we have the year 2018, 2019, and 2020. So for this, also, and it's a way of filling, we will use a function called random between. So I will select the whole year for the whole salespersons and for the whole cars, and I will come to the formula bar, and I will say equal to random between. And I put the minimum number and the maximum number. So I'm assuming that for this year, you have been sold between 10 and 40 cards per month. And for this kind of filling, because I have selected the whole, the whole range, so I will click Control Enter. So with clicking Control Enters, we have the whole cells filled with numbers between 10 and 20, uh, sorry, 10 and 40. 
So I will use the same formula for the next year. I'm going to say equal to random between and this one. It will be from 20 to 50, for example. And again, command enter. And for the next year, again, I'm going to select the full year and random equals to random between and for example 15 to 45 and click enter okay so these are random numbers what if you want to make it reserved at the same not numbers so what i will have to do is i will just select it and copy it and just right click at the first cell and paste special and say paste values. So currently it is a formula, but when I copy it and paste it as values, it will become a reserved values, no formulas anymore. So I will do that with the old cells. Copy and paste as values. And this one again. Copy and paste as values. So we have all the cells as values. Good. Now, what if I want to have a total of each of those cells for the last three years? What would you do? Normally, what we are doing is we will go for a total tab and we will say Jan equal to, we will go to 2018 Jan and plus, and we will go to 2019 and plus, and we will go 2020 and plus, and then enter. Okay, then it will preserve the numbers. And if we can see here in the formula bar, it has the C2 for 2018, 2019, and 2020. If we have many cells, if we have, sorry, many sheets, then the, it will be tedious going to each and every sheet and say plus, plus, plus. Plus, if we, if we inserted one more sheet in between, it will not be counted automatically. We need to go again and select it, right? So there is another way, which is 3D referencing. So what we are going to do is we are going to come to this cell and put equal to, and we will go to first one, and we are going to select first cell, and with shift, we are going to select until 2020. We will see in the formula bar, we have 2018 colon 2020 and C2, which means count C2 or do whatever with this cell. So here we will put some again and we'll click enter. We have the same one here. So we have the same cell, the same value, but without having plus, 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 plus. Again, we can have this formula for the, for the whole row, just double click on, on this icon there. So you have it for the whole thing and we can just drag it horizontally. So we have all the sums for the whole year. The good thing is if you inserted any sheet just any sheet, if you inserted any sheet here and call it, for example, year 2016, and I'll copy the same and put it in year 2016. If you come here, total has changed. For example, I go to 2016 and I'll put for Raymond, he sold 1,000 car. 
So automatically here you see it increased by 1000. So the good thing about 3D referencing is that you, you don't need to add the extra plus and whatever sheet you inserted here, you will find it as well. I'll give you one minute to try it, please. So you can go and try it in the Excel sheet. Then, all, all, all the sheets should be identical, right? Uh, or defin yes, definitely, as because you, ha you are having total for the same kind of sheets. It might not be identical. It might not be identical as long as you are doing the formula for the same cell. You know? Mm. But what if in, in, in later stages you change the, the columns, the change the order of the columns? So the formula will, will be uh, messy, right? If you, if you change, if you cha uh, it's, it's a reference. So if you are referencing to C2, if you change C2 to, for example, uh, I can click here this one, X, and put it here, insert. So again, it's referencing to C2, or you are, or you are talking about the, uh, the uh, original sheets. The, the whole sheet, because now you, you are uh, uh, automatically calculated, that it will automatically sum, right? All the, all the cells. Yes. It's, so it's that's, mean, that's mean February will include it with January in the total. No, here, here I'm calculating only, only Jan, here only Feb, because I'm, refer I'm, I'm referring to D2, which is Feb. Here I'm referring to E2, which is March. Okay, regardless, the, the, the whole idea is I don't have to, uh, to repeat the plus sign, or I don't, if I need to include dynamically uh, a sheet within, within 2018 and 2020, mm -hmm. I can do it. Actually, there is another way, which is even easier, uh, you can see that I have renamed uh, the sheets with year, 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 year 2018, year 2016, 2019, and 2020. For example, if I have another sheet in between, for example, uh, I'll name it uh, info sheet. So I can come to the totals and just come here and say sum star year star exclamation c2 and you see again it has sorry star year star Exclamation C2. Okay, it automatically got from 2018 until 2020 and it excluded the info sheet. Okay, so uh, with this tool, because if, if you have the sheets have the same prefix or the same suffix, then you can use the uh, asterisk and it will do the same thing. Okay. Azim, there's a question in the WhatsApp group saying that these commands are in which version of Office? Because someone uh, it's has from, Office yeah, 2007. Uh, it's, uh, it's from 2010. Thank you. I think it's applicable also, it's applicable in 2007. You can use it in 2007. Okay. The version I'm using now is 2016 on Mac, but uh, the same thing on Windows. Last thing in the introduction, in Excel we have something called uh, defined range or named range. For example, in this sheet you will find the salary. So you can just come, click on the salary and come to this corner and name this range. For example, I name this range salaries and click enter. So anywhere in Excel, so for example, if I'm in, in the total sheet, I will come here and click salaries. It will take me automatic to the cells 
I have uh, selected and for example if I come here and put sum and say salaries I will find the named range here so I can have some actually I can the good thing is I can have it anywhere in the Excel so for example I don't need to to remember what was that I will just come here in another sheet and put sum and if I don't remember I can only click F3 and I will have all the defined ranges or the name ranges so I can come here and just double click and click so it will be it will be here. Uh, named ranges are very uh, very useful if I need to refer to whatever ranges anywhere in the whole worksheet in the whole workbook, not only in the worksheet. You can have another way, which is you can click with the title and go to formulas and go to define names and define name. Again, here you will find that you can have the name you can have the range of cells and you can add and delete okay if i delete it it will be invalid if i clicked here and delete you see it's invalid so take one minute to participate how can you define a name Hadam, one question here what is the yes. difference what is the difference between uh, the defined name sum and the sum icons itself. There is no difference. The only difference, as you see, if I deleted the name, it will have invalid. See here, I have deleted the name, so it's invalid. Okay, it's the same thing. I can come here and say sum, and just click the whole range. But I need just to exclude the last cell. It's the same. But here it's still reference. It's if I click, double click, you will see it's the cell reference. It's from F2 until F7, okay? And it's the same, same amount. And here, if you go to define names, if you check the salary, it's, it's already from F2 until F7. It's the same. But, but the good of Define names is I can go anywhere in the whole workbook. I will just put equal to salaries. For example, if I do it like this, you will find it copied the whole the whole range here. Okay, I can come to this the corner here and click on the old cell or old in name. It will take me back to the to that defined names. Ah, uh, so the only the, so the only option just to. Uh, go back to the the same uh, location. No, no, no. no. It's, it's the the only option is not go back to the same location, but is to use it for anywhere. I don't need to remember that salaries are from F two to F seven. Anywhere in the whole workbook, I just need to to refer to salaries. For example, what is the average? For example, what is the average of salaries? So I can come here, click F three salaries. So this is the average of salaries. So I don't need to remember yeah. salaries is sheet one or sheet two or sheet three from F2 to F, uh, F7, okay. okay? Azim, you may move on. Yes. Yes, Raymond? Yeah, go ahead, move on to the next part. To catch up with time okay next do you know how to to sum or to count sum and count are very easy and basic functions in excel but there is much better types or versions of sums for example here we have salespersons and we have car makes. So if I want to sum, I will easily come here and go to automatic sum. And it has the sum of all of this. But what if, what if I need to know the uh, sum only for, for Raymond? Then we have 
two functions, one of them called sum if, uh, sum if and sum ifs. Sum if has only one condition to, to check for and sum ifs have multiple conditions. So sum if, if I go to sum if, you will see it has a range and criteria. So for example, this is the range and the criteria is I need to sum for only Raymond. So I will create a right Raymond. But I cannot sum Raymond. So I need what is the sum range, what I'm going to sum. So I'm going to sum only for Jan. And do it. So here you will find that this is the sum only for Raymond and only for Jan. We can check it by saying equal to or sum and Raymond and that's it. But what if I don't need only to select sum for Raymond but I need to select sum for Raymond and Anwar. So I will both select so sum, not if but some ifs. Some ifs has multiple criteria. So first of all, what I what I do want what I what I want to sum. So I want to sum for Jan. And what is the criteria range? So this is the criteria range. And whom I want to sum? Raymond. And what is the criteria range again? So the same criteria range. And whom I want to create for Anwar? So it's zero. Why it's zero? Because this is and it needs to, to select for Raymond and Anwar, which is not there. But I can change this criteria range and make it, see this for example, the type, and this one I'll make it mm, Audi. So here, it's only for Raymond and only for Audi. So this is 114, this is 114. Same thing we are doing for sum f, I can do it for count f. So you can have one minute to check the sum f, the same as count f. Next, we have a very simple but a very, uh, very good function or very good tool of Excel, which is forecasting or goal seek. We have a simple type of goal seek and a very, an advanced type. We are going to talk about the simple type, which is goal seek itself. Goal seek works on formulas and on assumptions. For example, if we have total items, total items sold, 55 and the sales price is $3.5 or KD per, per piece. Then here we have a formula, which is the number of items where the sales price will give me this income. Okay, so what if I need to know how many pieces I need to sell if I need to have total income of 500? So all what I have to do is go to data, what if analysis and go to goal seek. Then what is the cell I need to, to check for, which is supposed to be a formula. So D6, this is a cell. And what is the value I need to reach? I need to reach, for example, 500. And what is the cell I need to change? It's the number of items. 
I will just say, okay, and it will calculate, it will tell me that I have 143 items to sell to reach 500 income, okay? I can say, okay, so it will keep the value here, or I can say cancel, so it will go back to the same, to the, the, the original number. So I will say cancel, okay. Someone will tell me it's easy to, to figure out this one. For example, if I need to sell 500, to reach 500, automatically I will say here, equal to 500 divided by this one. So again, it will give me the number of cells, no issues. This is an easy formula, but what if I have the cost of the item, I'll assume the cost is 1.4, for example, and I need to calculate the profit. So profit is these items or total income minus number of items multiplied by cost. So this is the profit this time. What if I need to what if I need to increase the profit to become 300? So again, I go to goal seek. Now this is my set cell, and I need to reach 500 dollars, 500 dinars as a profit, not as an income, by changing the total sales. So again, it will calculate and it will tell me that we have 238 items to sell to reach 500 as a profit. So I would say, okay. So again, this is the way. So I can use it for a simple formula. I can use it for more complex formula. This is the easy way. There is another version of gold seek. It goes solver. So this is a solver. We can discuss it later because it's a bit more complex. So you can check the gold seek and if you have a question on the gold seek, you can call me please. Any questions on Gold Seek? Okay. Uh, sorry, Hazem, the connection was unstable for me. So, uh, can you repeat the last one minute? Uh, did you did you did you get the gold seek or not yet? Hello. Yes, yes, Mohammed. Hazem, did you get the gold seek? Mo'min, Mo are you there? Can you hear me correctly? Anyone can hear? Mo'min. Uh, Hizam. Yes, Ad yes uh, Anand. Yeah, Anand here. Anand. Uh, could you give some examples of how to use Goldseek for some complex, uh, complex data, uh, data? Like, like if you want to, you know, for a range, when you specify a range or, you know, uh, data pertaining to a particular range and, you know, a particular date and something? For, for, for a range, uh, Gold Seek will not work for range. There is another, another thing called Solver. 
Sorry? You see this? Solver, solver. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you okay. see this one? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, you, you can contact me after after the, the session and we can check solver together because oh, it's, uh, great. it's more complex and it takes, this one works with ranges. Gold seek works only with uh, with two cells. Oh, Gold okay. Seek needs only two cells, one which is the set, which is a formula, and one which is then you need to change. Okay. No, I remember using it long back, Gold seek scenarios and, you know, there was yeah. one other thing. Which, you know, uh, but I am not sure how to apply it, you know, in the daily work. Okay, so this is Gold Seek. Did you get the Gold so Seek right now? You so, know how to go so to the okay, after, after this, I'll, I'll surely contact you. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, next, we have four functions. Those functions are working to, to find a cell or to find a value based on another value, which is V lookup, vertical lookup, edge lookup, index and match. So assuming we have this small table and we need to know what is the cost of a power supply or what is the sales price for one tera hard disk, uh, one tera SSD hard disk. So the first function we are going to use is V lookup, which stands for vertical lookup. So normally we have a product or we have a value that we need to know another attribute for that value. For, for the products, we are going to use a very normal thing, which is data. So we will come here and say data validation and data validation, and we will have a list and come here and we will just select all of them. So here, we have all the lists. Simply, we are going to say VLOOKUP. And VLOOKUP looks for a value. So this is the value we are looking for. And this value should be in an array. And to use VLOOKUP, one of the drawbacks or one of the shortcomings of, of VLOOKUP is the, the value we are looking for should be on the leftmost cell or leftmost column. With that, we have to select from very leftmost and all the array we are looking for. And then, which column we are looking for? For example, cost, we know it's the second column, so we will put two. And we need exact match, so we will put false. So now we have the motherboard. The cost is 100. We are going to come here and drag and. Okay. Now, what happened? I just clicked here, so it's changed. The range because it's auto fill. So I'm, I'm coming here, it's from A2 to uh, D12. When I came here, it became from I3 to A, uh, A3 to D13. So there is one shortcut. You just come here and click on the range here and you click F4. Again, you click F4. So you freeze the range because I need, I always need this range. So I will just freeze the range by clicking F4, F4, and then again, I will do like this, but I will change the column. So this is column three, and this is column four, because this is column number one. This is, so again here, this is column number two, which is a cost. This is column number three, which is the sales price. And this is column number four, which is the profit. So when I change this, for example, when I select one tera SSD, it automatically change. When I select mouse, it automatically change. So if I need to know, sure, this is a very short uh, table, but for a, a long table, this is very helpful. 
Same thing I can do it with horizontal. Now I'm looking vertical, I'm looking for rows. What if I'm looking for columns? So we can do a very simple thing. I will just select this, control C and come here and paste, but I will paste special, I will do a special paste which is called transpose. Transpose converts columns into rows. So I will do like this, you will find here and instead of having as columns, product cost, sales price, and profit became rows. Again, I will copy this. But instead of having VLOOKUP, I will have horizontal lookup. So I will click equal to H lookup and same thing what I'm looking for I'm looking for this value and I will freeze it and the array again it will start from the first row to till this till the last row and I will freeze it and which row I'm looking for, for the second row, and false. So same thing, I will expand it. Again, this is the third row, and this is the fourth row. So instead of having columns, I'm looking for rows, first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. Again, the shortcoming or the drawback of horizontal is it depends on the first row. It doesn't go backward. It doesn't depend on the second row. You first row must be the first row in the range. Okay. I can do again one thing. I can rename the whole range. For example, here, I can come here and give it a name. For example, products. And I can come here and just use it. F3 products. I cannot use it. Has to be it has to be still reference. Okay. So you can take one minute only to check for the VLOOKUP before we go to the next one because we are running out of time, which is the match and index. Uh Hizam, I just have one question, a simple question. So I have been mm -hmm. using it for quite some time, but you know, I still don't understand the concept as to why we use that uh, hash, I mean, the dollar sign. It is to... Uh, yes, yes. No, no, no. Uh, see, uh, uh, you, you have seen when I, uh, when I didn't use a dollar sign means you have to freeze. So here I'm freezing the A, so, and the A2. So whatever I select, whatever I go uh -huh. left, right, okay? See, A2 is not changing. Yes, okay? yes, exactly. So I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you another example. If I, if I remove the dollar sign from two, then two will start changing. It will become oh. uh, A3 for, uh, see, I will copy, I will copy okay. this. I'll copy this here, okay? Here is freezed, so I will just change the two, okay? When I drag, you see, it become A3. Oh, okay. It changed. Okay. Here, it become here. It become A4. It's changed. Okay. If I if I here reserve it the two, which is the which is the uh, row, and remove the S from the uh, A, which is the column, A will be changed. So if I if I go horizontally like this, see, it become in A. Why in A? Because here it's looking for B2, and B2 is not there okay here, here it will become c2 okay so the dollar sign says preserve the column and preserve the row preserve the column and preserve the row so wherever you are changing wherever you are dragging making autofill so the autofill will not change these things because i need always to select this one as a product okay so this one is always what i'm looking for mm -hmm. and this is also the array which i'm looking into Okay, it will take an array of this thing. Okay. 
and also one more yeah. one more yes. thing sorry sorry for taking up your time but one more thing many times when yeah. my when i try to we look up from another sheet wherein the data is in that text to column format okay okay it doesn't appear though the format is the same it doesn't appear it comes as na why is that so can you share me that sheet so i can i can uh, no i don't have that sheet right now on me but uh, you know yeah. whenever the the sheet i mean uh, when the data when that when, the, when that particular column is in text to column format okay. with a green with a green this thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i got it uh, yeah so yeah. whenever i try to copy it do i make the format the same way okay so it doesn't let's, fetch let's, the correct values or it comes as any it doesn't do that let's have the discussion after the session we can we can sure sure sure, sure 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 okay. sure we have two things to discuss yes uh, sure hazim sorry i was disconnected so i'm not following you completely but i realized uh, that you make um, a data validation for this one yes um, okay uh, later on i i will follow with you how to do all these things but uh, yeah, yeah. my question yeah. I'll, i'll again i'll again do the data validation with the uh, uh, match index so yes. uh, i think uh, uh, this is not my question my question here if you have a long list of 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 uh, of uh, product yes uh, how to do a search option in that cell same see if i want to make data validation because it's it's uh, in a in a long cell all what you want to do is to for example come here okay come to data validation make a list and come here click here uh control shift down control shift and arrow down it will select the whole list whatever the list is yes okay how to make a search list in that validation and in, in that data validation for example if you have like uh, thousands of products and you cannot open the drop down list and search for the one particular product i need just to type that particular product and search in that search uh, option how can we do it okay uh, after the session moment inshallah i will discuss it with you okay azam you have 5 minutes left to okay continue. so next is match and index uh, you have seen that we look up and horizontal look up is working only with the first left column or with the top left or with the tip, uh, top row so what if i need to uh, to go not with the to, not with the first column so then we have a function called index index as you see it has an array and row number and column number so it's like a, a gps i need to have an array so for example i have this array and i have this is for me this is my first column so i have go up or down and left or right so i will go second column second row sorry and first column so you will see i have second row first column agm so i can work minus 1 so no value so i can start from here and work like this or the device version how can this work how can i get this one without knowing which which cell or which row i'm looking for so this one works properly all what i need to know here is a uh, if i again go to this function all what i need to know which which row i'm looking for or which column i'm looking for so to know which row i'm looking for there is another function called match so for example i need to know for the 1 tera hard disk so again i will say the product and for the product i will have a data validation a list and that list of these columns
And here I will have the cost. So I will say index and the index, the whole area, sorry, equal to index and the index is the whole area. So I don't need, or I don't know which row. So I will say match. And what I need to match is this one. And I need to match it in this array. And I need to make it full match. So I will say false. And I need to have the cost, which is the first, sorry, second column. Yes. Now we have an A because I don't have a product. So I will just come here and select AGB. It comes automatically. Okay. Here we have no products. I have NA. So I will jump directly to the last session, which what if I have error? So we have two functions for, for dealing with errors. The most important one is if error. So I will just type F error. And I will put my whole formula in the F error. So if the formula is okay, it will return my value. Otherwise, I will put, for example, error. And that's it. If I select any item, it will automatically come. And this is the formula. I have the index. Index will give me the row and column. I know the column already, which is column number two, but I don't want, I don't know the row. So the row depends on the value here, which I'm getting it with, with match. If the value is okay, so if error will not work, if the value is wrong, then it will give me error. With this, we know that how to handle errors with using if error, and how to work with a simple thing to work with the match and index and VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. If you want to try, you get one minute, I think, Ray. Yes, your time is up, Hazem, but you can have yeah, your time minute. is up. And yeah, you can have also, one minute and we can have, yeah. Go ahead, Hazem, say. Yeah. Yes, Ray, go ahead. No, I'm saying have your one minute to do that change. And for any questions or doubts, because we are out of time, you can directly message Hazem. He's on the group. And I've also put a link to give a feedback on his session. How did you feel about his session? So that he also can improve further. It will go yeah. directly to his email. Hazim? So we have the group. If you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me directly or send a question on the group. The group will be there, I think, for quite a good time. And uh, thank you very much. I hope you have benefited from my system. Thank you very much. Thank you. And back to you, Ray. Hazem, you can share this Excel file that you work your time with as well. Very informative. Yes, I will share it on the group right now. Thanks, Those Hazem. who would like to give feedback to Hazem, you can give it in the group as there a link which will send him a message directly.